Hello, how are you today? I hope your trading account is very bullish. Welcome to another video on how to efficiently use our institutional data. Every informed trader knows that institutional traders are accumulators. They load their positions over time, unlike retail traders who can open all positions at a go. This is because our positions are very small in size compared to institutional positions. In this video, we will discuss how to count accumulated institutional orders on an intraweek contract basis which will in turn show us their directional bias. Without wasting any of your time, let's jump right into the lesson. On our data sharing channel, we provide institutional orders in the form of pending orders which represent active orders on that day and pending orders for additional position accumulation when the price runs the pending order level. We explained more about this in our subscriber's guide video. If you have not watched that video, please do that right after this one. When estimating institutional accumulated orders, only active orders count. For a pending order to become active, the price must trigger it by running through the pending order level. When this happens, the total active order on that day becomes two. That is one original active order and one newly activated pending order. In summary, when the price runs one pending order on a day, the active order on that day becomes two, and when the price runs two pending orders on a day, the active orders on that day become four. These are the two original active orders and the two newly activated pending orders. In the futures market where the big institutions play, the short-term contracts traded in the currency market are daily, intraweek, weekly, and monthly contracts, with the shortest being the daily contract. For institutions to build their positions, they have to use daily contracts to accumulate positions for intraweek and weekly moves. Please note that this calendar applies to currencies only, for gold and NASDAQ. The contracts are quite different. There are no intraweek contracts in gold and NASDAQ. At the end of every daily contract, we share institutional orders from that day on the Thumbs Institutional Data Channel. With this data, it becomes easy for us to know what institutional accumulation is within an intraweek contract. Hence, we know what their bias is for the following intraweek contract. In the analysis of institutional accumulation, three intraweek contracts are involved. One, the previous intraweek contract. Two, the current or reference intraweek contract. Three, the future intraweek contract. Now let's take these one by one. The previous contract tells the direction of the current or reference contract with the active orders in it. Other than the active orders, the previous contract may hold pending orders that are yet to be activated. These pending orders are important in the reference intraweek contract as they may or may not be activated in the reference contract. The current intraweek contract is the accumulation contract. It is the reference contract for the order count. All the active orders within this contract make up the accumulation order count. These include the active orders opened on the days in the contract, the activated pending orders on the days in the contract, the pending orders activated in the previous contract by price action in the current contract as well as its active orders. Let me break it down to make it easier to grasp. The orders that make up the accumulation order count in the current intraweek contract are 1. Active orders in the contract 2. Activated pending orders in the contract 3. Activated pending order in the previous contract by price move in the current contract 4 the active orders of the activated pending orders from the previous contract. For example, in this illustration, this is the current intraweek contract. To determine the accumulation order count, we consider the active orders in the contract first. Here, we have a pending and an active sell order. Looking forward, we can see that the price already crossed the pending sell order level, which means that the pending order has been activated. That makes it two active sell orders. Here, we have one active buy and one pending buy that was not activated before the end of the contract. So, we have two sell and one buy orders within the reference contract. The next step is to check if the price action in the reference contract activated any pending orders in the previous contract. As you can see, this pending sell order was activated here. That means the active sell on that day is still active in addition to the activated pending sell order. That gives us two additional sell orders, making the total order count, four sells, and one buy for the current contract. That means the institutions expect the future intraweek contract to be bearish. If you find it difficult to grasp instantly, you can rewind this illustrated example multiple times to understand it better. 
Now let's go on the chart and do some accumulation order count and also see the resulting price move. We will be working with Euro US dollar because it is the prime mover of the whole currency market. We will analyze from the 16th of August to the 5th of September 2023. The first intraweek contract is this Wednesday to Friday. On Wednesday, there was a pending and an active sell. On Friday, we had another sell order. Now, let's do the order count for this intraweek contract. For active orders, we have one on Wednesday and one on Friday, making two already active sell orders. There are no buy orders. The next orders to consider are the activated pending orders. In this intraweek contract, the pending sell order on Wednesday was activated by this bullish push on Thursday. That gives us another active sell in addition to the existing two giving a total of three sells against zero buy. That means the institutions have accumulated more sell orders in anticipation of a bearish move for the next intraweek contract. Now, let's see how that played out. As you can see, the price made a high on Tuesday and delivered the sell move for the contract as expected. For this Monday-Tuesday contract, there is only one sell order placed here on Tuesday and a pending order placed at the high of the day. So, we have one active sell order already. The next step is to consider the activated pending order within the contract period. Here we have none. The next step is to consider the activated pending order in the previous contract, by price action in the reference contract. As you can see, the retracement on Monday activated the pending sell order on Friday's high, giving us an additional active sell order. For the institutions to activate that pending order on Friday, it means the active order on Friday is still active and the activated pending order is just an addition for accumulation purposes. That means we have two active orders from Friday. In addition to one active order on Tuesday, we now have three active sell orders against zero active buy orders. Just like the previous contract, it means the institutions expect a bearish move for the next intraweek contract. Let's see how that played out. As you can see, the price delivered the sell move as expected. Let's do the order count for Wednesday-Friday contract. For the active orders, we have two buys from Wednesday and one sell each from Thursday and Friday, leaving us with two active buys and two active sells. For activated pending orders within the contract, the bearish move on Friday activated the two pending buy orders on Wednesday, giving us two additional active buys. That makes our subtotal count four buys and two sells. For the activated pending order in the previous contract by the price action in the reference contract, there was none. So, the total order count for this intraweek contract is four buys against two sells. This means the institutions expect a bullish move in the next intraweek contract. Let's see how that played out. As you can see, the price delivered the buy move as expected. Moving on to the order count for this Monday Tuesday, there is only one active buy order as seen on Tuesday and no sell. For activated pending orders within the contract, there is none. However, for activated pending orders in the previous contract by price action in the reference contract, we have two. The bullish move on Tuesday ran through the two pending sell orders from the previous contract, thereby activating both and leaving us with two newly activated sell orders and two original active sells from the previous contract, making a total of four active sells. That leaves the total order count for the accumulation in Monday-Tuesday contract as four sells against one buy. This means the institutions expect a bearish move in the next contract. Let's see how that played out. As you can see, the price completed its buy move on Wednesday, made a high, and then delivered the expected sell move from there. Finally, let's do the order count for the Wednesday-Friday contract to determine institutional accumulation for the next contract. On Wednesday, we got a sell order. On Thursday, we got another sell order. And on Friday, we got another sell order, leaving us with three active sell orders. There was no buy order. For the activated pending orders in the contract, we have none as the price did not run through any of the pending orders. Our next consideration is the activated pending orders from the previous contract. As you can see, the sell move on Friday failed to run the pending buy order on Tuesday. This means we have no activated pending order from the previous contract. That leaves us with a total order count of three sells against zero buy, which means the institutions expect the bearish move to continue. Let's see how that played out. As you can see, the price gave a retracement on Monday and delivered the sell move from there as expected. This is exactly what is going on behind the scenes as you can tell from the accuracy. If you can read the institutional order flow as I have done in this video, 
I assure you of 90% accuracy with market direction. If you are good with price time analysis, aka technical analysis, you will have over 85% win rate with high risk to reward ratio. I have proven this in our free data telegram channel, and old members who witnessed it can testify. Thank you for watching. If you don't fully understand the order count, please watch the video as many times as you need to understand it. If you have questions, ask in the discussion group. I will do my best to answer it. Happy trading, guys.